Right. Hi, Rosie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thanks for joining us today um, for our third GIST seminar um, with our women in STEM. So very exciting. Um, so I think everyone knows that you are an astrobiologist, but we're going to go back to the beginning and talk about how you got there, basically. So through school and things. So can you tell us about um, school and how whether you enjoyed it or not? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed school. Um, so I was quite quiet while I was at school, but I always worked hard in my subjects. Um, and in particular, I really enjoyed the sciences. Uh, I found them really interesting, but I also enjoyed doing uh, more creative uh, subjects as well. So okay. I also did music and graphic design. That's excellent. I love that balance of, or you know, the mix of the two. I think that's really important. I think with science, sometimes it can be creative, hopefully, if yeah. you're allowed to be. <laughs> so nice balance there. Okay, so um, how did you feel you were going to do in your GCSEs? And if you don't mind, you could tell us about your results. Um, but yeah, were you confident as to how you were going to do? I was... I was quite confident. I always had the, the doubts before exams, I think, as everyone does. As soon as you walk into the exam hall, it's like, oh, mine's gone blank. Do I know this? <laughs> and then the exam paper comes. You're like, OK, I, I know this. I've gone through it. Um, it makes sense. Uh, so I was happy with my GCSE results. Um, so I took core science, additional science, maths, st uh, statistics, English literature, English language, music, graphic design, French, geography, uh, religious education, and physical education. Okay, big mix um, then, yeah. Big mix, lots of subjects. Yeah. Uh, and I got three A stars, so one was in graphic design, one was in music, and one was in English literature. Uh, I got six A's and two B's, and those B's were in maths and English language. So I was very happy with my results from there. Excellent. Okay, and so um, going on from that, were you planning on doing A level straight away? Yep. Um, yeah. So with school, did you stay in school to do A-levels or did you choose somewhere else to go? Um, to I chose that? somewhere else to go. Um, so there was that that sad moment where some of your friends go to one college and some of your friends go to the other one. Uh, so I still had a group of people around me who went from that same school to the same college, uh, which was nice to start there to already know some people. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a bit of extra confidence for people you know around you. Yeah, yeah, true. That's nice. And it's nice in sixth form as well, I guess, when you get to stay with, with your friends for another couple of years. So at college, what did you choose to do for your A-levels? Uh, so the first, uh, one I took which isn't a full A-level but it's a, uh, a course called general studies which is really useful and I'd really recommend uh, if anyone has the option which is where it helps you with uh, searching for jobs so things like writing a CV, mm -hmm. uh, writing a personal statement if you're planning to go to university and just general skills which are really useful uh, and then for my full A-levels I took maths, geology, physics and chemistry. Okay so you went for the sciences then? at college and why was that why did you choose to do them rather than some of the creative subjects Any... uh, the the main a level that i knew i wanted to do was geology so mm -hmm. i actually picked the college that i went to because they did geology okay um and then uh i did physics because i was looking forward to the astronomy side of things that i would get to do a small amount of during that course um and then chemistry, I couldn't really decide if I wanted to do biology or chemistry, but I felt like I should do another science. Um, so I went for chemistry in the end, uh, and then I also went for maths. So I didn't go for any of the, the creative ones that I did at my um, GCSEs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I just felt like I should do sciences at the time um, and that I could kind of pick those things up myself because they were created maybe in my own time I could right I okay. could do them but obviously the college and having other things to study that didn't happen uh, so I just didn't really <laughs> end up carrying on with them at all yeah so having that opportunity so why did you choose your geology course in particular was there anything that sort of drew you towards that rather than stay in as say sixth form or going to another college yeah, uh, so I, I knew I was interested in the Earth and the history of the Earth, learning a bit about fossils, um, also learning about other planets. And there was a bonus of the geology course at this uh, college, which was that you got to go on a field trip to Iceland, uh, which was absolutely amazing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was it was perfect. And it was what I like the one thing I definitely knew I wanted to study. Excellent. Oh, that's a good choice. I think going to Iceland is a, yeah. <laughs> a very, very good thing to do. Excellent. OK, so. Um, 
doing A levels, I'm assuming you wanted to go to university after that. Was that your sort of desired path? Okay. So what did you want to do? What was the plan in that sense to go and to choose where you were going to go to university? Yeah, I, I knew I wanted to go and study either astronomy uh, to learn a bit more about space or earth and ocean sciences to learn a bit more about our own planet. So mm-hmm. I kind of picked my courses based on that. So that you knew that what A levels you needed to do sort of tick the boxes to go to those. Yeah. Uh, to go to those sort of degrees. Okay. Um, and how did you do in your A levels, if you don't mind sharing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my A levels were uh, quite a huge step down from my GCSE grade. Oh dear. <laughs> um, yeah. So I actually got B, C, D, E, U. Um, okay. A level. Uh, so yeah, huge step down from what I'd got at GCSE, um, which was quite upsetting because I'd worked really hard over Mm. the two years Uh, but I think there's a few factors that affected my grades uh, for that Um, so one of them is that the way that I studied science at GCSE was that it was split into core science and additional science Mm -hmm. so I basically did three uh, modules so I did a little bit of biology chemistry and physics for core science and then a little bit of each of them for additional but I didn't do a separate GCSE for each science so there was a lot of stuff that I didn't cover during okay. GCSE that the people around me had when it got to A level mm-hmm. um, and a lot of things that the teachers expected you to know having done the full GCSEs so there was a lot of time trying to catch up with that um, which made right. it quite difficult okay um, and also um, just kind of feeling a bit of a lack of support as a woman in STEM subjects uh, okay physics and maths. Uh, so in physics Uh, I was one of only three girls in the class Um, and it's kind of like we weren't there so when there were experiments or um, demonstrations to do it was always the boys that got to go up and do them oh right okay yeah and um, in maths I was told in my very first lesson uh, that because I got a B at GCSE that I wasn't going to pass the course (gasps) Um, which not was a really good start. <laughs> no. yeah. um, oh. And then obviously, if there was something that I didn't get, I didn't feel comfortable going to that teacher to ask right. for help because they had no faith in my ability to pass the course. Oh. Um, and unsurprisingly, these were my two lowest A levels. Um, okay. That's yeah. such a shame, isn't it? I hope that doesn't happen to anybody else. I mean, you know, hopefully now. I know it wasn't that long ago. You're not, you're not old, old. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, hopefully that attitude has changed because that's, that's terrible. Yeah, so. I've, it's great to see the amount of schemes there are to start trying to stop this from happening and making sure that everyone's treated fairly um, mm-hmm. during their learning experiences. So yeah, I, I'd like to think it's a lot better now uh, mm-hmm. than it was then. It just happened that there wasn't anything like that when I was studying. Yeah, what a shame. Okay, so, but you still went on to university yeah um so how did that work out with the poor a level results because obviously I think if some people must think I've not done well in my a levels you know I can't go to university but you obviously did so how did you (laughs) how did you manage that uh well I first of all I didn't get onto any of the the courses that I'd applied to as you'd expect uh, because I hadn't got Mm -hmm. the grades okay Uh, so yeah had that initial panic of oh I can't go to university yeah I decided to look into it a bit more um and found uh something called a foundation degree right okay yeah so it's kind of in between the level of a levels and a full university degree but you study Mm -hmm. it for a year and it's kind of a top up it gives you a bit more information about the course you can study a few different things and then when you finish that you carry on to a full degree right Um, okay so I managed to find one of these at the University of South Wales that mm-hmm. would allow me to progress onto a degree in astronomy. So Fantastic. That, that was that, brilliant. Yeah, that might be something people aren't aren't so aware of, I guess. But you can find these bridging courses. They're usually a year, aren't they? Foundation yeah. degrees that can help top up what you've done. Fantastic. Oh, that's really good. So you did your degree at University of South Wales then? Yeah. And how did you find that? Yeah, I found it great. Um, there was a bit of confusion that the, the university changed names <laughs> partway yep. through the degree. So it was the University of Glamorgan and then it changed to the University of South Wales about halfway through um, <laughs> my degree. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. I loved the course. Um, so part of the reason I went for my course as well um, was that it wasn't just astronomy. It was a course called observational astronomy. Okay. There was actually less 
physics <clears throat> and math involved in the course there was more actually going out and hands-on using telescopes right. and learning about them and learning about galaxies and their shapes and planetary geology so I get the geology side of Excellent. things um, okay. in there so it, it was a really amazing course um, and absolutely perfect for what I needed on that so having done the financial duty against that course was was brilliant um yeah because mm. yeah I absolutely loved it that's really interesting I think it's important to sort of look into what each degree offers because even though it might be um the same title as another university the content can be quite different can't it so it's quite interesting and making sure you do a bit of research into what you actually want to study see if it suits yeah the, the degree suits what you want to do so that's really interesting okay so I know that you've ended up doing astrobiology which we might need to explain to some people um yeah. but how did you get from astronomy then into astrobiology yeah uh, so when I started my degree I didn't really know what I wanted to do afterwards I just knew that I was interested in astronomy and I wanted mm -hmm. to study it and then through the different modules that I studied I kind of got more of an idea of what I might want to do afterwards so in my first year I did a module in astrobiology so mm -hmm. essentially looking at the search for life beyond earth yeah. where we might be able to find life in our solar system, what planets might have the conditions for different things to survive in it, um, on them. And I really, really loved it um, so much that my final dissertation from my degree, I specialised in astrobiology. Okay. Um, and then in my final year of my degree, I also did a module on science communication. Mm -hmm. um, so we got to make videos explaining science concepts, write blogs and website, make websites. Um, and yeah, really, really enjoyed that as well. So I kind of wanted to do something where I could combine the two. Mm -hmm. um, so in my last year of my degree, I applied to work at a local science centre um, right. and I got the job, which is great. So I got to talk about science and communicate science to people. And then a few months in, I actually got to work in their planetarium. So I could oh, do science okay. communication, but I could also tailor it to astrobiology and talk about when we can see Mars in the night sky and then, then talk a bit more about Mars and the potential for life there. Um, Excellent. So okay. It was brilliant. Perfect work experience straight after after doing that excellent okay so astrobiology is looking for life outside of our planet so solar system and beyond yep um so how how do you study that and what what did you go on to do after your degree um to continue that study interesting yeah. subjects so my my dissertation in the final year of my uh, astronomy degree was basically looking at that how how can we use things on earth to look for life elsewhere mm -hmm. because we've already got what we've got on the earth um, to do yep. experiments Telescopes with and look at. Or, you know the usual yeah yeah and <laughs> yeah. um, so what I looked at were basically what what the most likely kind of life might be uh, mm -hmm. if we were looking beyond the earth and it turns out that is bacteria so teeny tiny microbes you can only okay. see so not life like cats and dogs or humans no. <laughs> or little green men no yeah. that. <laughs> no. Um, and there's quite a lot of studies into how these uh, microbes kind of survive in environments on the earth that could be similar to say Mars so for right. instance some okay. of the deserts on the earth are really dry they get mm -hmm. a lot of radiation hitting the surface um, and we could kind of say that's a bit similar to Mars so how do bacteria survive in in these conditions mm -hmm. and then how might they survive on Mars um, okay so I've looked at a few different examples of these for my dissertation um, and then after a year working in the science centre, well, after a year of graduating and working in the science centre, I then went on uh, to study a PhD in astrobiology. So oh, okay. I, I skipped the master's step of things. Yeah. Um, yep. I think the, the way this uh, happened was that after I'd uh, graduated, I actually went on a, um, a field trip course that was organised by my future PhD supervisor. He wasn't at the time. Oh, but, wow, okay. He's a big name in astrobiology. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw he was organizing a workshop in Sardinia um, about how microbes can live in caves and how you can right. use those as kind of an example of places beyond the air. Mm -hmm. um, so I signed up to go to that and I presented a poster on my um, the project I'd done in my final year. Um, uh, okay. I think he liked the poster yeah. <laughs> and I think just bit showing the interest in the subject and going out of my way to go to something like that mm. I think when I was applying kind of showed that I was really enthusiastic about the topic um, and that I really wanted to study it 
Wow, excellent. So you'd usually do a degree and then a master's for about a year yeah. to, to then sort of access a PhD, but you managed to sort of show your enthusiasm and knowledge through your extracurricular stuff, really, I guess. Yeah, and your sort of dedication to doing something in your own time that got you. Okay, so where did you end up doing a PhD? Um, and how does a PhD work? Because I, I haven't done one. And I'm always impressed when people have. <laughs> so how did yeah. it, how did that happen? Yeah, so I, I moved up to Edinburgh. So I did mm-hmm. my PhD at the University of Edinburgh. Um, and it's about four years where it's, it's different for each subject that you do. Um, so my PhD ended up being very focused on biology, uh, yeah, okay. which, again, a huge step um, from studying an astronomy degree to that. Uh, yeah. But, because I was really, really interested in astrobiology and how that biology kind of relates to to astrobiology as a whole and astronomy and other planets. Mm -hmm. Uh, I managed to to grasp the basics enough to to start doing some microbiology experiments. Okay, right. Specifically biology, looking at these microbes uh, that could survive in um, these environments that could be beyond the Earth as well. So I did about three years worth of experiments Mm -hmm. um, in a lab with these microbes looking at how they respond to different conditions we find on other planets um, okay or even icy moons in our solar system so Mm -hmm. we we do think that some of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn could potentially host life so so were these experiments looking at sort of putting these microbes in extreme conditions so very hot or yeah. very cold very dry that sort of thing I'm just imag- trying to imagine the sort of uh, experiments you were doing yeah exactly that so what I looked at was combining these conditions and looking at how having more than one at a time affected mm-hmm. how the bacteria grow because very often the studies into this only look at one of them at a time but okay. we know that on those planets actually there's loads can... of these different stresses yeah uh, so yeah looking at more realistically what those conditions are like when they're combined but yeah, it was essentially just growing bacteria under these different stresses and looking at what happens and trying to figure out why. <laughs> okay. I've um, never done that before, so it sounds <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Okay, yeah. um, so you did that for three years and obviously you have to write a big thesis for a PhD. So is that what you did for the last last year or so? Yeah, so the last year with a little bit longer because of um, certain global pandemics <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, was writing all of that at, into a thesis so about 200 pages of my work that I'd done oh. over, over the last three years um, so yeah I managed to do all that so that was submitted a few months ago now and then once you've submitted that it basically goes to some people to examine so they read through it they check that everything seems okay that you actually have done the work you haven't copied mm-hmm. pasted it from somewhere and, yep. put it in there. Um, and then you have an examination where they basically meet with you face to face or over zoom yeah, this um, is, a, is this called a viva this is called a viva yep. yeah okay yeah and they basically want to make sure that you can answer questions on your work and that you understand what you did and why mm-hmm. um and just talk through all everything that you did over the last three years and then hopefully right. at the end of that you get a phd Wow. So are you still waiting for that to happen? Yeah. Right. That, I always know that's really nerve wracking for people when they know they've got it and they're like studying their own work and revising it and make sure they know how to answer all the questions. So yeah, finding yeah. all the errors in it that you missed. Yeah. Before you it. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, well, that sounds amazing. So do you know when that vibe might happen or are you just waiting to hear from them? Uh, hopefully it will be at the end of February. So in just right. over a month's time okay um but that is subject to change because Mm. of current uh situations at universities it may get pushed back um so i am just kind of waiting to hear okay wow you make me you've exhausted me with your education and so much that you've done and and that phd is uh always sounds like hard work but really worth it if you're really into the subject i think you know you can't do more than you know do your own project and research your own things which sounds so exciting okay so can I ask you quickly what you're doing now in the interim while you're waiting to become a doctor because that's what you'll get won't you be Dr Rosie King excellent and looking forward Um, to the title (laughs) yes it really it's a brilliant title to have Um, so yeah um if you tell us not what you do now and then we'll open the open you up hopefully and uh, get you live to answer some questions to our audience so yeah, what are you doing now? 
Yeah, uh, so at the moment I have a job with a, uh, a company called UK Launch Services Limited. Mm -hmm. So I am their outreach lead. So what I do is I work with university students or anyone that's interested in the space industry in general in the UK. Oh, okay. um, and I look at ways that we can do something for them to be able to get involved with it. So one of my main things at the moment is that I'm organizing a competition that will hopefully take place in July at one mm -hmm. of the uh, future spaceports for the UK. So somewhere where awesome. rockets will actually launch from the UK, not all the way in America like they normally do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's um, really interesting. Okay. Yeah, so they will be able to launch uh, little... They're called CanSats, so it's basically a satellite that's put inside a Coke can, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, so they design things that they want to put in there, so they might want to measure what the temperature is um, as a CanSat falls from the sky, um, mm -hmm. or put something else in that. But these will launch on on rockets from this site, and then their little satellites in a can will will float down on a parachute, and they can measure things um, that they oh, want to. Okay. Oh, that sounds so, amazing. So what you so what is the company that you're working for? What so they're a UK space I don't know, not an yeah. agency, I don't know, but uh, so what is the company itself? Yeah, so they, they do lots of things. Uh, so engagement is one of them, um, but also just consultancy, uh, working with other projects, um, just more helping companies that want to do things in the space industry with oh. getting there and what they need. Um so so yeah, it's a very broad one, but okay. I, I really enjoy doing the outreach side of things. Um, yeah. And I actually got onto this job from doing an internship with the UK Space Agency. Okay. So, so they were an I internship. wonder how many people know that, you know, that's a real thing. Like we yeah. do our own space we have stuff. A space rather, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm going to leave it there because I don't want to yeah. ask too many questions because other people I'm sure will have questions about that. Because that's a really exciting to, thing to finish on um amazing so sending rockets up and doing your own experiments that's a brilliant competition okay so we're going to stop there thank you so much for joining us i know you're going to be live with us as well for our q a session so thank you for your time um this for been, me. That, that's been a pleasure it's been really interesting um and we will talk to you with our audience very soon brilliant okay. thank, thank you. you very much